creating a point-to-point -point mesh with WND930. Hi everybody, today we're going to demonstrate how easy it is to create a point-to-point -point mesh between two Netgear wireless access points. A point-to-point -point mesh is also known as wireless bridging or wireless distribution system WDS. It's a way to establish a layer 2 bridge with two wireless APs through a wireless connection. This can be used to connect APs across otherwise difficult areas to run Ethernet cables. For example, between two buildings on a campus. For this demo, I'll be configuring a point-to-point -point mesh between two WND930 outdoor APs on the 5 GHz band. To start, the WND930 is a dual band wireless and outdoor access point with 600 megabits per second of aggregate throughput. The AP has an IP67 rating, which means that it can perform in even the harshest of outdoor environments, such as storms. In our demo, the network topology will be as follows. What we want to do is connect segment A with segment B so that the workstations on segment B can connect to the internet. The two APs have IP addresses of 192.168.1.191 and 192.168.1.192, respectively. When connecting a wireless bridge, one thing to keep in mind is that you must treat this like any other wired layer 2 connection and be careful of creating a loop in your network. Before we start configuration, one prerequisite is to log into both APs, go to the Configuration Wireless Bridging page, and copy paste the local MAC address into a text file. Each AP needs the other AP's local MAC address to successfully create the wireless bridge. Now let's log into AP number one on segment A. To do that, we're going to open up our browser and log in. Go to Configuration Wireless Bridge. Since we're creating a wireless bridge on the 5 GHz band, select the 802.11a NA tab. Next, check the Enable Wireless Bridging checkbox. The Enable Wireless Client Association checkbox determines whether wireless clients can still connect to this AP after the bridge has been established. If, like in our demo, you're going to dedicate the wireless bridge between these two APs to wired clients, then uncheck this box. Next, click Apply. Now, we'll configure the wireless profile used to connect the two APs. Select the default profile and click on the Edit button at the bottom. Enter the name of the profile as well as the local MAC address of the other AP which we obtained earlier. Remember, this can be found on the same wireless bridging page and tab on the other AP. Next, we'll configure the authentication settings. By default, the network authentication is set to use an open system, uh, which obviously is not very secure. What we recommend doing is to change the network authentication to use WPA2 and then to use uh, AES for data encryption. And finally, we'll give it a uh, nice and uh, secure password. Click Apply. All joking aside, uh, be sure to use something that's uh, a little more secure than what we just used. And that's it for this AP. What we're going to do next is to log into the other AP and repeat the steps that we just performed on that AP. So let's log into uh, AP number two and repeat what we just did. Go to Configuration and Wireless Bridge, uh, select the 5 GHz band, um, check Enable Wireless Bridging, uncheck Enable Wireless Client Association, click Apply.
Next click Edit. Now for this part of configuration, be sure to use the same profile name, network authentication method, data encryption, and passphrase as what we use for AP number one as well. The only difference here is that we'll use the MAC address from AP number one in the remote MAC address field. So I'm going to paste. I'm going to change this to match the previous configuration along with our secure password and click apply. And that's it. In a few minutes, we have successfully configured a point-to-point -point mesh or wireless bridge between two WND930 wireless access points. Thanks for watching.